Welcome back. We are finishing up lesson six of circles part one. Okay, we're finishing these last few problems. So let's look at our diagrams. Number 30, we have an, a circle with an arc of 38. And then we have this perpendicular angle here. Well, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the chord R to this um, radius or diameter is congruent to this chord. So I'm going to mark those two congruent to each other. Now if those two are con um, chords are congruent to each other, that means this arc RP and PN are also congruent to each other. So I can mark that one as 38. We're trying to figure out this angle from M to N. Okay, and we've got a diameter going through here. So we know that MN and MR must also be congruent because they're in um, they're half of the circle, right? So if this is 38 and we know that this is a semicircle, we can just take 180 and subtract 38 from it to figure out what MN is. So let's grab my calculator. 180 minus 38 and that's 142. So that's the measure of this arc right here is 142 degrees. Okay, let's go to the next one, number 31. Okay, we've got two chords marked congruent. So just like the last problem, if these two chords are congruent, the two intercepted arcs are congruent. So this is um, 129, so this is 129. And MN, which is the one we don't know, is part of the whole thing. So how many degrees are in a circle? 360, so I have two parts that are 129. What's left over must be MN. So let's take 360 and subtract 129 twice, and that leaves us with 108. So that means this, or 102, excuse me, um, it means MN, the arc measure is 102, okay? So now this is kind of the same concept, but this time we have arcs marked congruent um, instead of the segments marked congruent. So let's look. This arc is the same as this arc. So PN has a measure of 115, so RM has a measure of 115. Now we see that RP and MN are congruent to each other, but we don't know either one. But we do know that a circle adds to 360. So if we took these two arcs out, we would let be left with a sum of these two. So I can find that and just divide it by 2 to find what MN is. So let's take 360 and we're going to subtract 115 from it twice. And that means the sum of RP MN, and MN is 130. Now we need to divide it by 2 to find each one. So that's 65 and that one's 65. And you could check it by adding up and making sure it added to 180. Okay, next one over is number 33. 33, let's see, we're given a chord right here, ZY is 6, and we're told, um, we're trying to find out, use the information to find XY. Well, XY is actually just a segment, isn't it? So we're trying to find the length of the segment. So if ZY is 6, and we know these two central angles are the same, that means that this segment must also be 6 because they're congruent to each other because they have the same central angle. Okay, let's go to the next one, 34. 34, let's do some marking on our diagram. We're gonna try to find the length of XY, which is this length right here. And we know that YZ is eight. So this chord right here from here to here is eight. Okay, we also know that we have a right angle here so that splits this in half, so that makes y, y to the core, or x to the chord, 4, and from here down, 4, splits it in half. And then, and then we know w, or xw, xw, this segment, is 6. Okay, now we have to figure out xy. Okay, xy is part of a right triangle. Do you see it? Right there. So I'm going to redraw that as W, X, Y, where this is 6. Whoops, you can't quite see that. This one's 4, and we don't know the hypotenuse. Well, how do you find the hypotenuse when you don't know it in a right triangle? 
you use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 6 squared plus 4 squared equals our c squared. So 36 plus 16 is c squared, and that adds to what, 52? So it's the square root of 52, and that breaks down to 2 root 13. And that would be the length of xy. Okay, one more on this page. They're getting a little harder, so hang in there. Okay, xy. xy is what we're looking for, so we're looking for the length of this chord. We can see that ac is 5. Well, if we know that we have a perpendicular angle here and AC is 5, that means CB must also be 5. So AB adds up to 10. Okay, now notice that P to C, this distance is congruent P to D, this distance. Well, there's a theorem that says two chords in a, the same circle that are equidistant from the center must also be congruent. So that means XY is also 10, and that's how you find that answer. So there's the end of lesson six on all the chords and a review of arcs. I hope this video was helpful.